Sellers, it's Mrs. Chin and welcome back to Allentube. Today I have a special project for us to work on together in honor of Mother's Day. Mother's Day is this Sunday and what a great way for all of you to show your mom how much you care and love her by making some homemade decorations. Now a lot of these materials that I have here I just found around my house. Um, so, you know, please don't feel like you need to go to the store and get things to make these homemade decorations because remember right now, scholars, what's most important is that you stay safe. Okay, so let's go ahead and get crafting. So the first um, Mother's Day project that you can do is very simple and very easy. Um, I have a printout that I made for my mom that you could later on frame or make a frame um, to give to your mom and she could hang this in her office or on the refrigerator or somewhere around the house. Now what I did was I copied a, a dictionary definition, so or like a page of it. So I wrote mom, I have the pronunciation. I told you that mom was a noun and then below are my very own definitions of what a mom means to me. So I wrote a person who gives the best hugs the one who makes the yummy food, and number three has a beautiful smile. Now I would continue on because I don't wanna leave those blank, but I wanted just to show you what a dictionary definition printout could look like for your mom. Now when I made this, scholars, all I used was a black marker. Do you have to use black? Of course not. Use whatever you have around your house. You could use crayons, color pencils. You can do them in different colors. Maybe your mom's favorite color, but I just chose to do black. And if you wanted to do this on the computer, that would be a great way to do that too. All right, so let's move on to project number two. Um, when my family has celebrations or holidays that we want to celebrate, we love to decorate them with something called a bunting. A bunting is basically just a sign that's on string, and so I'm going to show you how to do that today. So when you make your bunting scholars, you can find any paper you have around the house. Now this is just some paper that I had from my kindergarten classroom. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how you can make your sign in two sizes. You can make it full sheet like this for a big bunting if you like. If you want it to be half the size, fold it in half. But if you want it to be a little bit smaller, go ahead and fold it one more time. So that when you have your sign, you will have it be in the shape of either a, a rectangle or kind of like a square. Here. So here are some two different sizes. So, so I have a rectangle shape and then I have it in a mini rectangle. Or again, if you wanna do a full sheet, you can do it like this. Now I made some examples of some buntings of my own and the first one I did was I just took some white paper that I had at home and cut out the letter M and I glued it onto here. The second one I did was I just used a marker and made some fancy little lettering and you can do any type of font style that you want to do. The third one I did was again I did a cutout of a letter M and then I decorated it with some rosettes. And the fourth one I did was, because I love kawaii cartoons, I made a kawaii cartoon on my bunting. Now this one would be a fun one to do of all the things that your mom loves, but make them in kawaii style. So if her favorite fruit is watermelon, you would make a watermelon. If your mom loves hearts, make hearts, but you can make them kawaii. So now that I have my buntings, you may be asking, how did I make them look like this with a little triangle at the bottom. And when with this kind of style scholars, it's often called a pennant. So what I'm gonna do, friends, is take my paper, grab some scissors, and what you're gonna do is go from corner to the middle, corner to the middle, so that a small little rectangle is trimmed off. And then you would keep the top half to make your sign, okay? So now that your bunting is done, Remember, scholars, you can write whatever you like on your bunting. It can say, Mom, it can say, I love you. It can say, you're the best. It can say, Happy Mother's Day. 
please be creative and create whatever you want to say for your bunting for your mom. So I'm going to hang my bunting on my window right here just to see, just to show you what it would look like when it, you hang it up without the string, okay? So here's my M, here's my O, and then here's my second M, okay? So once your bunting's done and your phrase that you want to have on your sign is done, you would align it up like this and you would hang it on a string. So there's two ways you can hang your bunting on a string. If you have a hole puncher, what you're gonna do is hole punch two holes about maybe an inch to an inch and a half to two inches apart. And then you're gonna take your string and run it through the hole. Sorry, Sally's my string is quite large, so it's a little hard to get into this teeny tiny hole. I could only really find rope in my garage, okay? So this is one way you can hang your bunting, is to run the rope or your string through two holes. Now if you don't have a hole puncher, there's a second way you can do it today. Now what you could do is, you could take your bunting, sign, and you can fold over like this, and then you're going to hang it on your rope let me show you on a new one. Like this, hang it over your rope. And then what you're gonna do is to secure it in place, you could use a little bit of tape and tape it here. So let me grab a little bit of tape and secure it in place so that now your little bunting sign is hanging on your rope, okay? So um, with my sign, what I would do is I would hang the string through it so that I would hang on a line. Does that make sense, scholars? Okay. a bunting. I have a dictionary decoration uh, definition for my mom. Maybe I want to add some more decorations around my bunting. So one way you can make some decorations around your bunting is to make some pinwheels and fans. So an easy way to do this is to again to get paper eight and a half by eleven. You could use any color that you want but what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it like making a paper fan. And so when I do that, I'm going to fold up and then flip, fold up, and then flip. Now you want to keep doing this, scholars, until you get to the very end. You want to make sure that your folds and your creases are nice and crisp so that your fan will be nice and crisp. Okay? So once I reach the end, it should look like this. 
Okay, now the second step after you have made your accordion fold is to literally just fold it in half. So I'm gonna fold it in half like this. And I'm just gonna squish down to make sure it's really nice and tight and I've got some firm creases. Now what you're gonna do, scholars, is to attach it together, do you see how this is one end and a second end? Well, you can either one, staple it together, or if you don't have a stapler, you could use um, some tape and just secure it together. You could also use glue, but it might not be as tight or secure, so I suggest either stapling or using tape. So that now that you're, it's all um, attached together, when you open it up, it should be a half fan. Now what you're gonna do is, with, you're gonna do the exact same step, but with a second sheet of paper. So I just so happen to have a yellow one now. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna attach it together, just like I did before, with some tape. And so now I have two halves. Well, what you're gonna do to make a whole pinwheel is you're gonna put them together. So again, the way you're gonna put them together is line them up edge to edge, use your stapler or some tape and put it together. Now the middle may be a little bit floppy, so you should probably put some tape there as well or you wanna staple it just to make sure that your pinwheel stays nice and tight and it doesn't flop apart when you're hanging it up on the wall or on your mom's door or wherever you're decorating around the house. Okay, so now that my pin is done, it should look something like this. Now it kind of looks like a Pokemon ball. <laughs> but if you have pin wheels, you can make them in different shapes and different sizes. And what you can do is you can put them around your bunting to make it more festive and fun for your mom's decorations. Okay, so we have Dictionary decoration, decoration number one. We have our buntings number two, and we have some pin meals for number three. He catches my babies. She braids my hair. My mother is beyond compare. We love you, mothers, everywhere. Wow, that was something else. I really like the way you smiled at the end. Let's try this one more time. But a teensy bit less like a zombie. Okay? Okay. She kisses my boo-boos. She braids my hair. My mother is beyond compare. We love you mothers everywhere. for you to do scholars and it may be hard for us to get to the store to buy some flowers but why not make some homemade flowers so I made a homemade tulip today just using an index card and a straw and I cut out some little leaves well let's work on this project now so again use whatever you have around your house scholars I just happen to have a bunch of colored index cards so I drew a tulip pattern first and then you're gonna cut it out. And then again, you're gonna do that same fold that you did before with the fan. You're gonna do accordion folding. So fold up, fold back, fold up. Now this one, in order to get the straw through, it's easier if you have a hole puncher, but if you don't, you could probably make a little cut with your scissor and then slide the straw through it. Well, what you're gonna do is now that you have your accordion fold, you're gonna take your hole puncher and punch a hole through the middle. So that you should have three holes like this, maybe more if you made more um, accordion folds. Then you're gonna take your straw and just weave the straw through the holes. Maybe a little hard to get the straw through, but don't give up, scholars. So I'm gonna, ah, it's not going through for me, but I'm gonna keep trying, don't give up, and push it through. There we go. It's being a little stubborn right now. And I got one more hole to get my straw through. Okay. Ah, 
for my little friend to get through the hole. There we go. So now I have a flower tulip. So when you make a bunch of them, scholars, it's like a bouquet. And then you can cut out some leaves however way you want. I just made them into a little teardrop shape and then I folded it in half to give it some depth and dimension. And again, the easiest way to attach your leaves to your flowers is just by taping it on. So now I have a little bouquet of flowers that you can give to your mom. And you can surprise her anyway. You could also take your bouquet of flowers and put them in a little vase if you have one. So let's see. I've got like a little cup here. And you can present it to her this way, like in a little cup or a vase. You could um, get some wrapping paper or some tissue paper and wrap it up and then tie a bow around it and then give it to your mom this way. But here is just our fourth project for today is making some tulip flowers. So scholars, I hope you enjoyed our homemade crafts today that we can make for mom in, in honor of Mother's Day. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email and I'd be happy to show you um, some of the steps today that we did for our homemade Mother's Day crafts. So thanks for watching and have a happy Mother's Day. Bye.